welcome back everybody. So I am so excited. Our next session, we're going to talk about going global with Michael Cobb and ECI. They have so many different options on just easy ways to invest in property across the globe. And what I love about them is they go and do all the market research for you. They pick the right area. They pick the up and coming area where they know it's going to be hot. And then they help create a development there that everyone can be involved with. And another thing that I love about ECI is that they're a partner to real estate agents, particularly those of you that are CIPS, Certified International Property Specialist. And they come alongside us and help us stay educated so that our clients can always know about the best areas. So Michael, do you want to take it away? I would, Angie. Thank you for a great introduction. And uh, I like what you said because it, it really goes to the core mission of our company. And that is we, we listen for what people want and then we go develop the product that's in demand in the marketplace. And it really lets us be a service provider rather than a sales company, right? So it, it, it's this element of service. And, and you're right, we, we do have a very, uh, a very good program for the real estate community, realtors, CIPS, uh, we're not really going to touch on that today. We're, we're going to kind of talk about the areas of the world and some exciting things going on. Uh, I think I can share my screen. Yes, I can. Um, all right. So uh, I, I really like to start with this idea that we have a world of options, right? We have this, I mean, the world's a big place and there are so many places that we can be and own property and, and maybe even it's just vacations, right? But but a world of options and, and our specialty and where we've done work for the last 25 years, our company is in our 25th year of business, is in Latin America. And, and one of the things that constantly surprises people is this incredible geography and, and all the different kinds of choices that are out there in Latin America. And we're going to touch on that a little bit, and then we'll drill down into uh, one specific uh, country for an analysis. But I usually like to try to start at the 30,000 foot level and just say, why are you looking for property overseas? What's the interest? Or in the case of realtors, why are your clients looking overseas? Because the why is really, really important. Are we looking for relocation? Are we looking for a property that we can retire to? Or maybe we're a snowbird coming out of the cold weather six months out of the year. Are we looking for something that's an investment, right? We're not really interested, but we understand that diversifying our portfolio overseas makes sense. Maybe we're looking for a little bit of both. And, and how do we get the best of both worlds? And then there's this third group of people who we've really seen emerging in the last 12 to 18 months. And, and that's this idea of finding a community of like-minded individuals who enjoy the company of one another and, and really want to be in a community together. And so this fourth one is new and exciting and, and, and has a lot of potential and a lot of possibilities in the coming years. And, and we're certainly going to be paying attention to that and serving those consumers as well. So to come to this idea of all these different choices, you know, where in the world do you want to be? Do you want to be in a Caribbean destination with world-class diving? Do you want to be in a, a place a lot like where you are in Southern California, the semi-arid tropical year-round golf on the Pacific Ocean, big waves, surfing, empty waves. Let me just say that. If you're a surfer, empty waves, right? That's a big deal. Uh, uh, do you want to be in the mountains, in the jungle, or in the cloud forest? Do you like to fly fish? Or, or maybe you or some of your clients have always dreamed of owning a home in Napa Valley or Sonoma Valley, but, but you or they don't have two, three, four million dollars to own a vineyard property. Well, all of these things are much more affordable in Latin America. And, and in many cases, you know, in, in the case of Argentina, for example, a vineyard estate in Argentina is, is two or three hundred thousand dollars. So 10 cents on the dollar. So all of a sudden you have these lifestyle equivalents or in many cases, in some ways enhanced uh, equivalents, but they cost far less. So this is, this is the opportunity that, that people are really looking at. And, and, and I wanna thin slice this idea of geography even further, right? So we start again with this big picture question, am I looking for a vacation property, a retirement? Uh, property or, or an investment property, right? Am I looking for a home that I'm going to use a lot or is this an investment? But again, the geography is very mixed, right? We have cool and warm. We have moist. We have dry. 
We have urban, we have cities, we have resorts, we have beaches and mountains, right? So you've got all these different things you can kind of mix up. Some people like to be on their own. Some people want to be part of a community. And some people are okay with, you know what, they're working on it. It'll get here soon. Other people, for example, as someone who's retired or a snowbird, they don't care when the golf course is coming. If they move there, they want to start playing golf today, right? So when you start to mix these different elements together, here's what it looks like or can look like because there are almost an infinite number of possibilities. But if we said we like dry four season, we want the vineyard kind of community, maybe we would look at something like Mendoza, Argentina, right up against the foothills of the Andes. Again, beautiful vineyard homes available from around 200 to 250,000 at the, at, the, at the lower end of the price point, up to the millions, of course. But you know, a beautiful home in a vineyard, 300, 350, $400,000 with this view right here. Some people say, you know what? I'm more of a springtime person. I love springtime, you know, and, and, and I like urban, right? I mean, I like cities. So Cuenca, Ecuador might be a great place for you because it's springtime all the time. The temperature at night is 60 to 65 degrees. The temperature in the day is somewhere between 70 and 80 degrees every day of the year. And, and, and this is a beautiful old colonial city of, of about half a million people. Some people might just flip that on its head and say, well, you know, that's nice, but I'm more of a modern city person. Well, how about Medellin, Colombia? Four and a half million people sits at roughly the same altitude, the same weather, springtime all the time. Uh, or somebody says, you know what? I, I'm not a city person, but I love this kind of weather. Well, outside of Cuenca or in the Central Valley of Costa Rica. Again, you can mix and match all of these things. Some people love the desert, right? Lots of people move to Phoenix and Scottsdale and, and, and that part of the world because they love the desert or Palm Springs and, and Indian Wells, right? But they want the beach. Well, if you like the desert at the beach, that's you know, Cabo San Lucas or it's along the Baja Peninsula. Uh, Caribbean, obviously, Belize is a great place to get a very incredible Caribbean experience for, again, pennies on the dollar. And then places that start, that, that start somewhere around the middle part of Costa Rica, up through the Guanacaste Peninsula, all of Nicaragua, and up into El Salvador, and then even Guatemala a little bit, deliver this Southern California climate. You know, eight months of dry season, temperatures in the 90s, uh, but very, very dry and about four months of rainy season with the temperatures in the 80s and a little more humid. But again, you can go out and golf every day of the year. It, it's that Southern California kind of climate. So again, all of these things mix and match in different ways to really create a, an incredible variety of lifestyle experiences, weather experiences and lifestyle experiences uh, for us and for our clients. I like to start with just a little story here. My, my, my wife, Carol, my daughter, Amanda, myself, this picture was taken in 2002, right when we moved to Nicaragua. And we moved to Nicaragua for what we thought would be two or three years, maybe four years, when we bought our Grand Pacifica property there. And we, so we moved and I, I spent the next, it took about four years, but we hired architects, engineers. We had a marketing department, the accounting people in. We had our first condominiums finished. The homes were done. And we had a chief operating officer to actually run the business. And Carol and I went out to dinner one night and, you know, we, 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 we really loved living in Nicaragua. And, and at the end of the dinner, we made a decision to stay in Nicaragua. And ultimately we were there a total of 14 years, uh, you know, four for the business and, and 10 by choice. Uh, it, it was an incredible quality of life. Our families came down to visit. We played in the jungle. We had a second daughter who came along, Emily. Uh, they were in dance together. Uh, they were in Girl Scouts. I mean, you think about Nicaragua, you wouldn't think Girl Scouts, but they were in Girl Scouts. And, and, you know, and we did the sort of the back home stuff. We watched football games and ate nachos and chicken wings. And, and, and so we had the back home experience, but we also had this incredibly rich experience in Nicaragua. And they grew up, uh, Nicaragua still is a big part of their home to them. Very inexpensive, very inexpensive. Sometimes people ask me, Mike, I don't get it. How can you have a higher quality of life and it costs less? Well, I mean, a massage in your home for $20, right? Uh, a full-time maid for under $200 a month, uh, gardening help, uh, you know, handyman kinds of things. Uh, I don't know how much it costs if you go down to whole paycheck and buy an organic tomato. I'm guessing it's in the dollar range. 
we used to get a bag of organic fruits and vegetables delivered from a coffee plantation to our home, delivered to our home every Tuesday, a coffee sack of organic fruits and vegetables delivered eight dollars we couldn't eat it all in a week we gave it to our maid we gave it to our gardener i mean it, it's incredibly inexpensive and the quality of life in many ways is far more enhanced because we could eat organic very affordably we could have domestic help which meant we had a lot of free time to go to the beach on the weekends or go to the mountains or do things as as a family medical care excellent if you know the Joint Commission International, JCI, they accredited hospitals all over the world. Uh, these are some of the JCI accredited hospitals in the region. Great medical care, very, very affordable. So I think that's one of the reasons, the lifestyle reason specifically that people are looking overseas. But there's also the investment idea. A lot of people are looking to own property overseas as a way to diversify their property investments. They already have rental properties in the United States. And they think, well, you know what, that's great. But you know, I, I want to have some assets outside the United States and I want cash flow producing properties. Well, owning a property overseas is a great way to do that. There are some very, very important considerations. And we'll look at those uh, first. Slow down. We're going to look at those. But the biggest, most important piece of information we need to have as property buyers, whether it's a lifestyle purchase, right, or an investment, we have to slow down and proceed with caution. Look, the palm trees, the golf courses, the beautiful colonial cities, whatever it is that the magic that draws you to your perfect location, that stuff will take care of itself. Trust me, it's already magical, right? But there's the real stuff that we have to pay attention to. Well, let's take a look at at one example, you know, I, I always like to start with this big concept of we don't know what we don't know. We don't know what we don't know, right? We can't. But what that really means is we have to take a humble approach. We need to be humble in our approach when we buy property overseas because it's foreign, it's different. We don't know what we don't know. You know, and 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 sometimes people get into this idea of, oh, you know, of course we don't compare apples and oranges. What do we compare? Well, we compare apples to apples, right? Isn't that the old saying? Well, my question that I hope everybody can really see is not all apples are the same thing. Thin slicing is important. Nuance is critically important. And again, if we don't know what we don't know, we have to proceed with caution. Margarita madness is our biggest enemy. This is the, this, I hate to call it the weapon of developers and real estate salespeople overseas, but Margarita Madness is their best tool. Let's call it a tool, right? Get people down there, they're having the best time in their life. It's awesome, the magic, blah, blah, blah. We're drinking some margaritas and the next thing you know, we're buying a condo in Cancun. I mean, like nobody comes to Orange County and just says, you know what, I'm buying a condo today, right? I mean, we do due diligence, right? We, we have to, we should, most of us do but it doesn't always happen overseas. We have to be prepared. And how do we get prepared? How do we find out what we need to know? Well, one way is through better questions, right? If we ask better questions, then we can do better due diligence. But if we don't know what we don't know, how do we know what questions to ask? Well, one of the things that we've done for the last 20 years, I, I started compiling a book about 20 years ago that we call our Consumer Resource Guide. And it is basically just that. It's 15 questions we should ask when we buy property overseas, right? Questions that we probably wouldn't think to ask. So if you'd like a copy of the Consumer Resource Guide, send us an email, info at ecidevelopment.com. We will send you a complimentary copy of the Consumer Resource Guide. It is a great, great asset for you to have when and if you're looking for property overseas. Let's see. So we're gonna look at one example, right? There's these 15 questions. They really boil down to three principles, buy what you see, own community, and know the developer. But this number four, question number four of the 15 is my absolute favorite, okay? Look at this question. Is the home or condominium plumb for hot water in all the bathrooms? Now, if you were looking for beautiful condominium in Orange County, you would not think to ask that question. You would not need to ask that question. You would just simply go, duh, yeah, all the bathrooms have hot water in them, right? Of course they do. 
check this out. This is a condominium in Costa Rica. The next slide. I want you to look at the picture in a second. Condominium in Costa Rica, $379,000. Beautiful condominium. Three bedrooms, three and a half bath. Each, mask, each suite has its own bathroom, right? Gorgeous. Check out this view. Look at that view. That is stunning. Look at that bathroom. That's a nice bathroom. You know, marble countertops, great lighting. I don't take great photos. And it's, I don't have a fisheye lens, but that's still, that's a nice bathroom. But if you don't know to get down on your hands and knees and look under the sink, I mean, like, you know, get down and look under the sink to actually see that there's a cold water pipe coming out of the wall being split so that both of those faucets up top have water, but they're both cold and the shower is cold. How do you know? We don't know what we don't know. We don't know that we've got to get down on our hands and knees and look under the sink to see if there's hot and cold water service. We don't know what we don't know. And the question that we want to ask ourselves as consumers is, would we want to know that two of the three bathrooms, you know, in this, in this beautiful condominium only had cold water showers before we wrote the check for $379,000? I would. And if we're realtors or real estate professionals, do we think that our clients would want to know that that was the case before they wrote the check? I hope you answer yes to that. I do, and I believe our clients as real estate professionals would want to know that too. So again, this is how we can be prepared. We can become armed with 15 questions, but more importantly, a different way of thinking, right? These 15 questions aren't all the questions. I mean, there are hundreds of questions, but if we learn how to think, if we learn the kinds of questions we need to ask, right, then we are prepared to do better due diligence. And ultimately, that's what we want to do. We want to own a property that's wonderful for us. This is our dream, maybe. This is our retirement home or our vacation home, or it's an investment property, right? I mean, this is, this is what we're investing our heart and soul into. We want to make sure that we own what we think we want to own you know, when it's all said and done. Uh, this, this was taken from 2020, sort of hot spots around the world. Uh, they're all over. I mean, there's you know, Spain and France and Greece and and Serbia and Thailand. And I mean, they're wonderful places all over the world. But what's interesting is about half of them are in Latin America between Mexico and, and Argentina and Chile. And, and the reason is, is that traveling north to south is very easy. The time zones are roughly the same, uh, more or less plus or minus an hour or so, two hours maybe. Um, and there's a lot of connectivity. So it's easy to travel north south. So many of these places that have become the hot spots for North Americans tend to be in Latin America. And again, this is where our company works because uh, it, it makes a lot of sense for us to do it. I like to put up this chart. Uh, it's a normal S curve. And, and we've got the different countries of the region that we've worked and we've spent some time. So I know these countries pretty well. And, and I also like to come back to the fact that if you notice, we've actually got Costa Rica on here three times. Top right, Pacific Costa Rica, kind of towards the middle, Costa Rica Highlands, and down towards the bottom, Caribbean Costa Rica. Remember when we talked about comparing apples and oranges, right? And we said, oh, not all apples are the same thing. This is where nuance is important. This is where thin slicing is important. Costa Rica is not one thing. Costa Rica is many things. In fact, it's not three things, it's many more than three things. But, but here to simplify it even a little bit, we've said, hey, there are three kinds of areas of Costa Rica. One not very popular, one really popular. And what's interesting, mostly for our investment buyers, is if you look at properties in, say, Nicaragua, the Caribbean side of Costa Rica, not very popular, no big branded hotels, prices of real estate are very affordable. As countries move up this curve, the prices of properties go up. And then you start to see branded hotel products, the Pacific side of Costa Rica, Four Seasons, JW Marriott's, Marriott's, uh, all kinds of big branded hotel properties. So again, this popularity curve determines a lot of different things for investors much more so than anywhere else. Belize, I like to say, is in the sweet spot of the curve. Uh, I've worked in Belize now. Our company started here in Belize 24, over 24 years ago now. Um, we've, uh, you know, we love Belize. Belize has moved from way down below Nicaragua 25 years ago when I first came here to about halfway up this popularity curve in the last 25 years. And we've correspondingly seen the price of real estate go up, 
the branded hotel product is just starting to arrive. Well, what, why is Belize so popular? Well, it's, it's close to North America. Uh, you know, the flights out of LA are about four, four and a half hours, flights out of Houston, two hours, flights out of Miami, an hour and a half. English is the official language, low property taxes. It was a former British colony and they have great residency programs that make it just so easy to become a resident here, especially for snowbirds and retirees. Now, Angie, here, I need your help because uh, the first person who hits the chat box with the answer to this question, when I get, I'm in Belize, when I come home from Belize at the end of next week, I will mail you a chocolate bar from Belize for the first, first person who can answer this question. The name of Belize prior to 1981, Angie, whoever gets it, if you would ask them for their mailing address and then shoot it to me, I will mail a chocolate bar to them and uh, uh, we'll, get, we'll get to the answer later. But okay. uh, Ambergus Key Belize is a lot like Key West was maybe 20 years ago. It, it's been fun to work here for the last 25 years and see this path of progress, um, but it still has a long way to go. Uh, again, airlift is phenomenal coming out of the US and Canada, discount airlines, tons of airlift. Uh, tourism up until this last year, 2020, was on the rise. As you know, as the vaccines get back in place and travel protocols become standard, Belize will rebound very, very quickly, uh, as will many other nations too. It's not just Belize, but you can see for the last 10 years, uh, from 2009 to 2018, tourism was just absolutely growing at you know, 13, 14% a year. But here's this idea of thin slicing one more time. Belize is a country about the size of Vermont, right? But what's interesting is that little island up there, Ambergus Key, generates 70% of all the tourism revenue for the country of Belize. Now, again, if you're a lifestyle person, you wanna live in the jungles of Belize, great, it's a lifestyle choice. Go live in the jungles, that's what you want, right? If you're thinking investment, if you're thinking investment, you wanna be where most of the tourists go because obviously investment properties require heads on beds and people spending the night there, rentals, right? So thin slicing a country like Belize is critically important, especially if we're investors. Again, Ambergus Key, 70% of all the tourism revenue from this tiny little island. Uh, this is a snapshot drone footage we took recently. Uh, it used to be a sleepy little fishing village, but as you can see, it's still very low rise, really uh, just a couple branded hotels on the island today. Um, it is a wonderful Caribbean community. One of the things that people love so much about coming to Belize and Ambergris Key are the people and this absolute sense of community that's here. It exists, it's real. Uh, people obviously come for the recreation. They wanna take inner tubes and float through caves. They wanna hike the Mayan ruins. They wanna zip line in the jungle. Uh, they wanna do the bird watching. And, 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 and these are all incredible activities on the mainland. Then when you get out to the island, the fishing, the snorkeling, the kayaking, the I mean, it is an incredible water destination. These are the things that draw people to the island of Ambergris Key and make it such a wonderful tourism destination and a community for the people who decide to live here part-time or full-time. One of the great things about TripAdvisor is simply that these are user reviews. These are consumers who have come to the country and said, wow, this place is awesome, right? And, and, and that says a lot because you know, consumers are very fickle and consumers say what they think, right? And, and so to get this kind of rating year after year after year on TripAdvisor is phenomenal. Uh, you know, again, we're talking about this transitional element. Belize is about halfway up the curve, right? I mean, it's, it's becoming more popular. There's one Hilton open on the island of Ambergris Key. There's a Marriott property that's gonna be open sometime later this year. Our company is developing this Marriott property. Again, the brands are just starting to get here. So, so the, this idea of on the curve, the sweet spot of the curve, really Ambergris Key has hit the sweet spot. Uh, again, it, it's wonderful to be a part of this transition. Again, having worked here for 25 years, we've watched this transition come to be and now to help accelerate it and, and move it over the hump. And, and, and price points at $300,000 for a Marriott residence on the water. Again, price points that are a fraction of what they would be in the British Virgin Islands, the Turks and Caicos, the Caymans, and the Bahamas. Brands at the mid-level, right? A best Western kind of brand off the water. Uh, again, this is something we've been developing. We developed the first 66 condominiums there over the last uh, 10 years. They're up, they're built, they're sold. 
uh, Best Western came in and said, we want to brand it a Best Western, and, and we have. Uh, we're starting on our next, uh, uh, the next pre-sales of our building, but you know, residences in a Best Western community, two blocks off the water for $110,000. Very, very affordable for people who want to become you know, investors outside the US, possibly Belize. All right, Angie, did we, get a, did we get somebody who answered that question correctly? British Honduras. Yes, we got Sarah All right. from Jamaica. So you get to send chocolate ah. to Jamaica, man. I, I look forward to that. Well, I think you guys have great chocolate in Jamaica too, but, um, but fantastic. Well, please make sure I get an address and we will have a chocolate bar on the way uh, the week, uh, not, not next, I get home next Friday. So the following Monday in the mail. Um, you know, one of the things we also like to touch on is uh, agricultural investments. A lot of people making agricultural investments in the region, whether it's fruit uh, plantations, uh, many kinds of, of timber plantations. Our, our company has worked in teak. I planted my very first teak plantation in Panama back in 1999. The trees are now 21, coming up on 22 years old. Uh, harvest cycle is 25 years. So again, something that we as a company are very familiar with because we've been doing it for over two decades. Uh, the kinds of return on investment in Teak, uh, $7,000 investment turns into about $90,000 over 25 years uh, uh, on a much shorter time period. Teak that we own that's now 15 years old, uh, $15,000, $16,000 again to about $90,000. So, uh, so again, these are the kinds of investments that you or your clients may be looking for overseas. The agricultural sector is very, very popular because it's a hard asset. It's an asset that grows in value over time, literally grows in value over time. The other thing about Panama, which is really nice, which is one of the reasons we love working in Panama with our timber plantations, is the fact that you can pair up your investment in timber with a second residency. And at the beginning, I talked about this idea of like-minded individuals. What we're seeing and what we saw last year and, and certainly now into this year, um, we're seeing a lot of people who want to get a second residency. They kind of look at it as a plan B, right? The COVID has scared people silly, right? I mean, people are moving out of the cities. If you look at the National Association of Realtors data, the, the economic data that they put out, the transition out of the cities is significant. It's not a flood by any means, but it is statistically significant, the number of people moving out of the cities into the country. Well, some of the people moving out of the cities are also looking about moving out of the country. Panama is a great place uh, to pick up a second residency and is seeing a lot of this outbound traffic. So again, uh, something just to keep in mind if your clients are asking and looking at stuff uh, to be aware that this is a program that's out there. And then the other thing about it is, is once you have a Panamanian residency, a second residency, you'd keep your US citizenship, you'd keep your US residency, but it's permanent and it lasts forever. And you only have to visit one day every two months to keep it. So again, very, very easy residency to get, very, very easy residency to keep. And then the other thing we always like to talk about, I know there are many realtors and real estate professionals on this phone call, but if, 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 if you're looking at property overseas and you're not working with a realtor in the United States, I highly recommend you talk to your local realtor, please. Real estate professionals bring value to the transaction. That's why they're there. We are, we, because I am as well, we are professionals in the real estate business. We understand the things that we might need to ask, right? We know how to look under the, under the hood, so to speak, or look under the cabinets and look for that hot water and many, many other things like that. If you're looking for property overseas, please reach out to a local realtor in your home community, someone who listed a home for you, sold your home, someone you know in the real estate industry who can advise you and be your counsel. Trust me, they will bring value to this transaction. Uh, you will be so happy that you involve them. And, and 99 times out of 100, the seller, the developer or the seller pays their fee. It doesn't cost you anything to have this expertise in your transaction. So again, we, we, uh, we, we highly encourage that. Uh, if you wanna come down and visit, we've got great tours, uh, discovery tours, lots of fun. We introduce you to uh, lawyers and bankers and, and insurance agents, and you get to do fun things, but, but it's a chance to really, what I call kick the dirt, right? And, 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 and be in the country and experience it. And we, uh, we have dates, they, they're changing. Obviously COVID has made a lot of this stuff very, very fluid. So we don't have firm dates at this point, but if you'd like to be kept 
in the loop as to when these events will be happening, send us an email, info at ecidevelopment.com. We will absolutely put you on the list to hear about the upcoming discovery tours. Let us know what country you'd like, Belize, Panama, uh, uh, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Argentina. Uh, we have trade missions and discovery tours to all of these locations. And last, if you are seriously thinking about or even maybe thinking about owning property overseas, please, 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 please request the Consumer Resource Guide. We'll send it to you. It is such a valuable document for the due diligence process. And, and, uh, and, and that's it. Angie, I, I thank you so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Spencer, I don't know if you're here, but, but thank you for, for inviting me to be a part of this program. I, I, I really enjoy being able to talk about what's going on around certainly Latin America, but in the globe too, and, and, and hopefully providing some help and some value to, to any of the transactions that people are considering. Oh, you're definitely providing the value. I'm getting text message after text message that people want to move overseas right now, Michael. <laughs> Good. Well, yeah, they do, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think I think you've got everybody excited about the opportunities. And I just, you know, I love the prices and I love the fact that you do that consumer report and you do the research for that. And so you guys make sure to um, connect with Michael and ECI. They have a YouTube channel. You can subscribe to that and get more videos and they yeah. also do regular webinars if you want to log on to one of those